we have Brian Weiser presenting on Apple's Blast from the Past. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. So, um, uh, if you've seen my presentation before, I'm just going to do a quick overview for those of you who are new to Apple Puget Sound Program Library Exchange, otherwise known as APPLE or Call Apple. We are uh, the one of the oldest user groups in the United States, started in 1978 by Val Goldie. And uh, just to give you an overview of the members, we've got uh, football player extraordinaire Bill Martins, who's the president. He's really been responsible for uh, reinvigorating uh, the user group several years back. And uh, he's the big head honcho. Uh, I, of course, am a big Firefly fan, as you may be able to tell there. And um, I do the primary designing and editing of all of our books, and I also write for the site. Jim Maricondo is uh, probably best known for the Twilight 2 screensaver for the GS. And uh, he also has been uh, involved from the early days. Uh, a lot of projects like the Waz Speaks DVD that came out several years ago. And then of course, uh, Mr. Retrobright here, Javier, uh, reviews hardware and writes articles for us. So we're probably best known for uh, Call Magazine. And uh, the, besides Call Apple, there were over seven different publications that the user group did release over the years. And that's just one of the early covers. And if you happen to become a member, uh, you do have access to all of the legacy PDFs. Uh, that is one of the benefits. And speaking of old issues, uh, 1978 being the first year of publication, uh, lots of the issues were like just a few pages, thin newsletters, didn't have wide distribution. They're quite rare. I actually don't even have any in my personal collection. So uh, scan them, enhance them, and uh, you can buy the book of all the first year issues, along with the book of the second year issues, uh, with the forward from Don Williams. So talking about membership, um, base level membership is about $28. And besides access to the PDF library, we've got over 100 uh, titles we've produced over the years. We have occasional raffles for software. Um, there's um, third party discounts that are provided to us by you know, companies in the industry. So uh, that would, is our user group. And back to the magazine, uh, not only are there the older issues, but we are, st we are still producing the magazine today. It is on a random schedule. Uh, this issue came out January, February for paid members. And uh, Bill wrote a really nice article on Steve Jobs, uh, The Quiet Life of Being a Philanthropist. Actually, Steve Jobs did do a, a lot of that, and he's not well known for it. And it's a really good five-page article. And Bill actually took that photo several years back, so he's really proud of that. And the uh, magazine covers, just like the website, covers retro and current news, reviews. Um, and the last issue was 36 pages, so it's uh, pretty big. And uh, this is another one of our older magazines, Mac APPLE, which also changed its name over time. And uh, we've got a number of issues. We still need to get some more online, and we're missing a number. So if you happen to have any issues, you might want to double check with us to see if, if we need one. And uh, the Australian Apple Review, uh, this one is freely available on our Apple Archive site, and we helped make those uh, issues available several years back. So uh, leaping into a quick overview of the different websites we manage, it's not just callapple.org, it's a lot of other sites, and I'll go through them each in turn. Uh, Call Apple, of course, retro and current news, totally volunteer. Uh, if you want to help us out, write articles, just let us know. We'd love to have more contributors. Apple Archives, uh, this is a fun one. You go there and there's going to be links and resources all over the place, lots of PDFs, links to existing sites, manuals, 
Uh, it's a, a, big, uh, a big resource for things. And some of the sites we're well known for, like Beagle, are hosted on Apple Archives, so you can also find it at the main site. Uh, our Beagle uh, site is the official repository. It's had contributions from many members of the community, uh, original Beagle Bros people like Randy and some of the founders. Uh, Beagle's in my blood, so I'm, I'm very passionate about that. Uh, we also run the Applied Engineering website with a lot of materials we've purchased and acquired over the years. If you need any manuals, my self-created Envision brochures, uh, catalogs, firmware, that's your one-stop place for Applied Engineering. VirtualApple.org uh, web browser emulation since 2003. And the database behind Virtual Apple is actually used by a number of other emulators like ActiveGS and the uh, online Apple II game server. And uh, also, uh, via a companion site, we run a lot of sites, uh, GameZite, we've also got Virtual Atari, Virtual Game Boy, so a bunch of different emulation. MECC, uh, this is a big passion, especially for Bill. Uh, Bill has spent thousands of dollars over, vari over various years buying material, getting material from the original presidents who also support the site and making it freely available on our site. We still have lots of scanning to do and lots of things to put up. It's a work in progress, but we're very passionate about education. And we are a big book publisher. We've released over 11 or over 10 book titles. And um, callapple.org slash books will get you to all of these. WASPAC was the first uh, big one we re-released uh, several years back. Um, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's the first official technical manual for the Apple II with materials supplied by Apple in the day to our user group. Um, and um, it's, of course, been long out of print. And uh, this book features forwards from Woz, uh, Andy Hertzfeld, other Apple aficionados. And it combines Woz Pack 1 and 2. Uh, the, the original was barely readable, uh, multiple generation photocopies. I went in and enhanced Waz's handwriting, literally a letter at a time, to make it readable. So it's pretty darn cool. And Waz even seems to think so. He's smiling. That was uh, taken when he showed up at Kansas Fest unexpectedly. And I got to announce it with him, which is still very surrealistic. Um, our other big technical book we released last year, which was a two-year project, is What's Where in the Apple Enhanced Edition. This is a book also that was a big back in the day. Uh, this is over 600 pages, and it took two years because there were a lot of errors, data missing. Uh, so we were very, very detailed, literally line by line, uh, reading through the atlas. What's this address? Oh, there's a number wrong. The description's wrong. So it's, it's a great resource for programmers of all levels. Um, and we've also added new chapters for the 2E and the 2C and Protoss. And just a quick view of one of the chapters and the detailed atlas that has all the hex decimal addresses and descriptions. And we also re-released the uh, Apple II monitor peeled, which was a big book in the 70s, about 100 pages. It was popular, so we wanted to make it available again. And also last year, last year was actually a really busy year. Uh, in honor of Mike Harvey, who was the keynote speaker last year, Mike Harvey was the founder and publisher of Nibble Magazine. So I uh, collaborated with him over many months and produced Nibble Viewpoints, Business Insights in the com Computing Revolution. And uh, the art on the cover is actually his art that he did, so he's multi-talented. And this book, is an enhanced compilation of over 180 of his editorials that appeared not only in Nibble but in the other publications he produced. 
and I say enhanced uh, compilation because he would often revisit topics in either Nibble or in his other magazines, expanding, removing viable content, and so here's this article. I would go and look at all the versions and say, oh, well, we need a sentence from this one, a sentence from that one, make it cohesive, so you've just got one article rather than having... Anyway, I wanted a complete vision of his vision of the different topics he discussed, business personal advice, Apple II history, piracy, a bunch of different topics. Uh, so we're, uh, we're really proud of that book. We also released last year the Colossal Computer Cartoon Book, Enhanced Edition, and uh, that uh, was originally produced by David All of Creative Computing Press, and David wrote a new forward for it, and it's just a fun book of computer cartoons, uh, a couple hundred different cartoons. I love art, so uh, it's pretty fun. And also last year, we released uh, Turtlesoft, uh, expanded the manual, and, uh, Curtis and uh, got access to the source code uh, directly from uh, Robert Gallup. And because we had the source code, John Brooks was able to do the ProDOS conversion. If you want the software, it's freely available. Just go to the books link on our website, and you can grab the disk, and the link uh, to buy the manual is there as well. And uh, we also released uh, Structurus, uh, which was done originally by Martin Hay on the Apple II for the Apple II. It's kind of a Tetris-like game that's not quite Tetris. And uh, we worked for darn near two years with Martin doing additional programming and uh, Olivier Gogol to um, bring it to iOS with neoclassical music, touch controls, game center, and um, so we're also an Apple developer, or an app developer, rather. So that's it for the last year review. Now we're on to 2017. And uh, we released two books, uh, actually announced uh, just a month ago, with Robert Clardy of Synergistic Software. So this first one is his autobiography. Uh, Cyberjack, that name has a special meaning for him. Uh, Cyberjack, the Adventures of Robert Clardy and Synergistic Software. And uh, just to tell you before I go on, so this uh, art on the cover by Dean Waite was originally part of the Game Probe 1 for the Atari. Yes, he did do things uh, for computers besides the Apple. And uh, the dragon you might recognize from the Campaign Trilogy cover. And uh, being his autobiography, it's his history at Synergistic, uh, the different titles he wrote for a number of different platforms. Uh, he produced software not only for Synergistic, but for major companies like Activision and Epix and Sierra. Uh, over 400 titles over 20 plus years, either under his name or under the other company names. He, adapt he did arcade game ad uh, adaptations as well. Um, so beyond synergistic history and programming, he's also got a lot of fun adventures in there. This particular adventure, uh, that's Bob, and then he's with Waz and um, Roger Wagner and his wife on a fun hang gliding trip. And here we've got one of the pages with some of the early art. He does use some footnotes in the book. He's a big fan of the author Terry Pratchett, and I guess to honor one of his favorite authors, and he wanted to throw in some humorous anecdotes, there, we've got some footnotes in the book. We have tricks of the trade, getting the most from the hardware, so some of his programming techniques and explain, explaining how things worked, uh, just to help you know the casual reader or the more advanced reader understand some of the different things he did. And uh, one of the things he released for other systems was the Conan series. And here you can see uh, Bob uh, uh, as Conan. I understand he was a very tough programmer to work with back in the day. Actually, he's a, he's a real awesome guy. And uh, that's Bob today. 
And um, I should tell you the way this book came about, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Bob at his house a few years back uh, through Bill Martins and uh, just got to talking about his history and he'd never thought about writing it down before. So Bill and I inspired him to record his history because he was such a big part of the industry and, uh, and preserve it. And that meeting was what resulted in this book coming out a couple years later. And Bob and I have been collaborating on it uh, for the last uh, five months. I mentioned Sierra was one of the big companies he partnered with releasing Fexter for the GS, and also later a Windows version. He's got uh, business-related advice, like becoming a manager, uh, his uh, strengths and weaknesses in being a manager, and his perspective on what new people going into business might need or might look for. And there's fun stuff, too, because he's a fun guy. I uh, wanted to read uh, each of these out to you his office rules back in the day. Be at the office at least one hour a day while Bob is there. Attend the bi-weekly one-hour office meetings. Get the job done. Never steal source code. He's got a great story that, yeah, um, you'll have to read it. Uh, don't shoot the clients, and most importantly, pipe bombs and designated smoking areas only. <laughs> These were the posted office rules, so. Uh, and he's got a chapter on partnerships that weren't quite as enjoyable, along with advice on specifically what to do if you're thinking of entering into a partnership, uh, just things to watch out for, things to do. And many other adventures. He's actively involved in the scouts and karate, so he's a very well-rounded guy. At the end of the book is a software history of all the different software he's uh, created. That's the uh, rare Odyssey cover art, by the way. And there are over 17 pages of software credits. He has done quite a bit. Next up, we've got the synergistic software, the early games. This is an enhanced compilation of 17 of the first uh, game manuals. Uh, produced between 78 and 82. And um, I designed the cover to look like the original packaging featuring the cover art from Odyssey. And you might recognize uh, some of the titles like Dungeon Campaign, Bolo, Crisis Mountain. Procyon Warrior is a little less known, but still fun. App Venture to Atlantis. I always liked Microbe, which is actually medically accurate. He uh, partnered up with the doctor to do that one. And so just to give you an example of one of the manuals, there's the uh, primary cover arts, the earlier cover arts. I had to create a title page in most cases, and of course had to add screenshots. On the left, there's just a general description of the game, some more screenshots and uh, system requirements at the bottom. This one was big enough, it needed its own table of contents inside the book. And just the manual. And uh, some of the cover art variations, for example, Wilder Wilderness Campaign, the one on the left, Bob actually drew himself. And then when he, got, when he got a little more money, he hired a professional artist to do the one on the right. Frankly, I think the one on the left is pretty darn good. I, I don't know that he needed another artist. But his games did have a lot of really fun arts. And this one, I bet you've never heard of before. Uh, Tank Attack and Death Run. This is a game he released that wasn't as popular. It was done by another programmer. And I think he has the only copy on the planet. Uh, he loaned me the original manual and the disc. And uh, thanks to 4AM, uh, 4AM really helped uh, me get the software archived and uh, deprotected. And the software is available. Uh, and uh, because of that, I was able to get screenshots in the manual and uh, make the software available as well. So thank you, 4AM, whoever you are. 
And then this book, of course, has some software credits, but just spanning the 78 through 82 years. And uh, those are the things that have already happened a month ago. Uh, today, we are announcing a new version of GBBS Pro, version 2.2. This is the big bulletin board system that uh, a lot of people used. And uh, before I go into too many details on that, again, talking about the art on the cover. So we started uh, with the 2.0 manual, but going back to the 1.0 Pro manual, there were seven different fun dragon images that didn't show up anywhere else. I love art, need to preserve it. We need art for the book. So uh, I colorized the dragon, thought he'd be a fun little guy on the front cover. And uh, there's a login screen you might have seen as a user. So what is the 2.2 updates? It's been programmed largely by original GBBS programmer Andrew Wells. He's been spending many months on this. Uh, also, Henry Pedro contributed. <coughs> and it updates program, program segments, uh, more error checking, corrected messages, overall enhanced reliability. It's been a lot of work uh, and both the software and the source code are uh, released under GPL uh, 3.0 by the current copyright holder of the software who's Kevin M. Smallwood and that does mean that it is freely available but it is still copyrighted and today you can go to our official site and download the 2.14 uh, software and source code um, and 2.2 will be available soon. Uh, the software will be available soon. And uh, it's just going through some beta testing right now before we put it out there. And uh, the official site is at uh, gbbs.applearchives.com where we like to host lots of things. And just to give you an idea of what's in the manual, which is expanded, merged from uh, different versions. I should add, for some reason, they decided to drop the glossary from the previous release of the manual. So the glossary is back in and other sections. Uh, there's the what's new section. There's a detailed installation guide uh, that's a lot more clear than it used to be. Screenshots, of course, help, help things out. There's a new internet setup guide by Gene Buckle. Uh, some of the sysop commands, I love this one, disowning a user. <coughs> yes, those were the days. Uh, there's a detailed ACOS reference chapter. ACOS is the underlying programming language. Expanded error messages, and now you know how to handle a bug. Information on modifying the system, shell listings for the different segments, VT100, you know, lots of detailed fun stuff. And I did want to specifically point out the glossary. So the original glossary had some fun Easter eggs. So had to add some of our own entries. I added an entry for Woz, because he needed to be in there. Uh, I just said, uh, Steve Wozniak, an Apple computer co-founder, inventor of the Apple I and Apple II, all-around genius, nice guy, uber geek, philanthropist, and a legal string assignment in GBBS. And that, uh, if you actually read the manual cover to cover, there was an example in there saying a legal string assignment is and it had the previous publisher's name. I thought, nah, let's put Waz in there. So that's actually referencing something in the manual. And we emailed Waz, and he got a real kick out of it. So that's always good that he likes it. Um, and then uh, one of the legacy Easter eggs I really like, Cursor, uh, apart from the original definition, a sysop who, who is adding a new mode which kills his data file. And then uh, the letter Y, questions that sysops ask that have no answer, and a glossary to help complete the alphabet. So they had fun back then, too. 
And the software, again, is at our official sites. The software and hardcover of the book slash manual is available today on our site. And I should add as well, beyond just the manual and the art, uh, we've got forwards from Kevin M. Smallwood, uh, Andrew Wells, the programmer, and Gene Buckle and uh, Skip, and uh, Bill Martins as well. And uh, we're really excited about this, and we really hope that this um, reinvigorates the BBS community so people can bring their old systems online or bring new systems online. And uh, that's that. Um, I did also want to talk about partnerships. For those of you who may not, oh, we're to five? Oh, okay. Uh, for those of you who may not know, uh, with all of our books, we've been partnering, well, with most of our books, uh, we partner with the original authors. So that means when you buy a book or an app from us, you're not only supporting us, you're also supporting the original authors. We do pay them. And just to give you an example, uh, with GBBS Pro, in that case, uh, we're donating to various charities with some of the proceeds. Nibble Viewpoints benefits Mike Harvey. Structurist benefits Martin Hay and Olivier Gogol, not Oz. Uh, What's Where in the Apple benefits Robert Tripp. And the new Synergistic Books benefit Robert Clardy. And we do want to say, if you like our user group, if you like our books, if you like what we do, tell someone, buy a book, become a member, support us any way, any way you'd like. These projects do take an enormous amount of time. Uh, just speaking for myself, this is practically my full-time job. I'm not just doing this on the weekends, I'm working on this stuff every day. And um, some of the projects are more successful than others, just to give you a real-world example with Structurists, uh, that was a year and a half development time, uh, we actually haven't sold enough yet for Apple to actually pay us, but we wanted to give the authors their fair share, Martin and Olivier, so we sent them enough money to maybe pay for a couple of cups of coffee. That doesn't really inspire more app development. I won't make analogies about the books, but again, if you like us, do what you can. And because I do like Steve Jobs, who also hated slideshows, that's why I had 130 slides. Um, <laughs> one more thing. The Twilight 2 uh, GS screensaver, we've recovered the source code. Yay. And we never stop working because we're crazy people who love Apple. And questions? Yes? What will you do with the Twilight 2 source code? Uh, we thought we'd put it in a blender, mix it around, see what comes out. Uh, uh, we haven't gotten that far yet. It just barely happened. So I'm sure we're going to do something good with it. Yes? So programs to convert database formats, it's possible. We've got an enormous library. I don't know, I haven't memorized all the, all the titles. It's possible there's something in there. It's also possible one of those database programs maybe has an export option to some intermediate like format. Post Apple II, you know, software about the Apple II, like, like uh, emulators and... There's usually a way. I've converted a lot of different things, and there's usually a way to move the old data forward. Any other questions? Oh, uh, come on. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're not going to have any of uh, the GPGS books at the vendor fair this, right? Uh, I do have the near final beta book up here, if you want to thumb through it, along with okay. a couple other books and flyers I brought. Uh, so literally, just barely finished it, so you can order it today and then preview it over here if you'd like.
Okay. No other questions, then thank you very much.